five strategies and 11 benefits of farmer's market shopping today on the Carefree Cooks Code, and we're live every Tuesday at noon. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cook's Code. Welcome back to the Carefree Cook's Code, everyone. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. If this fact surprises you, uh, then you should go to webcookingclasses.com slash live and uh, get part of my alert system. I send an alert out 15 minutes before I go live because we're the carefree cooks. We create our own recipes, right? This brings friends and family together. We learn every time we cook. We define our own cooking styles. That's because we practice pro methods and we love are cooking. Hey everyone, I'm so glad to see everyone with me again. Carrie Shaver is here. Hi Carrie from Wisconsin. Debbie is with us. TJ and Denise and Carol and Arlene and Betty and Donald and all these people, these names scrolling by. Bob Lewis is with us. Hi Diane. Allen is here from Walpole. Massachusetts, that's great because I'm so excited that we're together. I know I'm always so excited, but especially this time of year, I get very excited because when the weather starts to break, when (laughs) my winter jacket stays in the closet for more than a 24-hour period, right? Or it could stay in there for days when I can stop going to the grocery store And I can start seeing all my farmer's friends at the local market. I am one of my farmer's friends and I can see those farmers that have become friends. And I want to tell you all about it today because I get so worked up. But first, I have a true or false for you. Tell me in the uh, comment section below. True or false, lettuce should always be torn by hand, not cut with a knife to avoid brown edges. Should you always tear lettuce with your hands. That's the true or false today. So true or false, you should always tear lettuce with your hands. That's the idea. All right, look, we know I get a little nutty about the farmer's market, okay? I'll admit it. Those of you that have been following me for years see this blooming coming out of me about this time of year. I start bouncing up and down. I get really excited. I'm like my dog, Harry, waiting on the UPS man, you know, because I've been making stews. I've been making chilies and burritos and casseroles and heavy dark sauces for winter months. You know, I, I, I've been cooking root vegetables. I've been cooking carrots and, and turnips and onions and, and roasting things. And it's been winter cooking, but now all that stuff that was planted weeks ago, it's coming my way. You know, I don't have to go to it. It's coming to me. And they're going to be these new foods. They're going to be the inspiration for an amazing original dish as soon as I can go pick it up from the farmer. Because to me, the farmer's market, when the farmer's market opens, it's like new paints. If you're a painter, it's, it's like new strings. It's like new air being put into my cooking. It's just like so exciting to me because if you love cooking, you get so much more inspired when you get a good ingredient. And and that's just why I love the farmer's market so much. So look, if you're with me, you know, if you love the freshest local food, if you love cooking with ingredients that, that respond, you know, that seem to talk to you, the ones that have the best full flavors, give me some love. Let me see. I have my phone over here. Let me see those hearts going crazy because it is a love of food time of year. 
year. And I've got five strategies and 11 benefits for you about farmer's market shopping that is going to get you as excited as I am about the coming season. So here's the top five strategies that I have for you to take with you to the farmer's market. The first is go commando. No, <laughs> no. all right, look, yeah, no, bring your underwear with you. Don't, don't, um, don't leave your underwear at home. What I mean by commando farmer's market shopping is listless. Don't go with a list. A list is useless at a farmer's market. We, I think we talked about this last week. You're not going to be able to find everything you might want at the farmer's market. This is where you create meals from what you find there. It's a 180 degree turn from the way that most people shop. They put together a list based on their recipes. They go to the mega store that has everything and they pick up that everything and then they go fulfill the recipe. And then they get another recipe. What do they got to do? Yeah, they got to go back to the grocery store because this recipe doesn't agree with the last recipe. And then that's how you wind up with saffron on your shelf for three years, right? You know, you go buy the things that the recipe tells you. This is entirely different. This is where you go to the farmer's market and you pick out the things that look best and freshest and you make up your own recipe from there. The second strategy I have for you, uh, beside creating meals from what you find there, is talk to the farmers. This is one of the most fun parts about the farmer's market. If you don't know what it is they're selling, they do. Ask them, hey, what's this? What, what would you do with it? How do you cook with it? Because I'll tell you, the, the guy that grows them, he has a lot of them. And his family probably eats them because he has so many of them. So he probably has figured out a dozen ways to cook it, no matter what it is. Whether he's a chicken rancher or a squash farmer or a zucchini grower, no matter what it is, he's figured out a way to do it. Ask him. That's one of the most fun. That's why I say I have so many friends that are farmer at the market. Hey, Kenny, the egg guy. Hey, Jill, the pork lady. Hey, you know, I know them all. And it's been so much fun talking to them. The other thing, the strategy is, you have to identify the freshest choices. Now, even at the farmer's market, there are some items that are fresher than others. The reason that freshness is important is because number one, it's flavor, but number two, it's an extra day or two in your refrigerator or in your shelf or in your closet. And it's a protection of your investment in food. So always consider how something grows. And I think we talked about this last week. If it grows in the dirt, drawing moisture toward the top, uh, store it that way. If it needs a lot of air circulation, otherwise it gets mushy and, and spoils, then wrap it in plastic. If when it's wrapped in plastic, it does get mushy and spoil, well then, you know, give it some air. These are the things that you need to look, think about. Uh, if you encounter a bent over asparagus tip, you know, like that, uh, yeah, that's not the one you want. Uh, 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 feel those broccoli florets. If they're kind of mushy or separated, if they're really not dense, like a brick, you know, you want to do that. Avoid any stalky ends. If you look at the end of something and it's all dried out, woody, stalky, it looks like the end of a Christmas tree, you skip that. You make all these decisions as you go. And then when you bring it home, a uh, proper storage, you, you want to invest. <laughs> uh, you want to protect that investment that you just made in food. So look, if I was a, a musician, I'd, I'd care for my guitar. You know, if I was really proud of the music that I play, I wouldn't leave my guitar out in the backyard in the rain. So that's what you do when you put corn in the refrigerator. That's what you do when you wrap lettuce in plastic. It's like leaving your guitar in the backyard out in the rain. I value these things I bring home from the farmer's market so much that I want to protect them and treat them well. And the fifth strategy is that you need to be able to match the cooking method to the food that you're going to find there. Again, this goes with the recipe first and go find it versus find it and then write a recipe. The same thing applies. Find it and then figure out how you're going to cook it or come up with it while you're standing at the market because the idea is to highlight the natural flavor of the food. You don't braise a flounder filet. <laughs> There's no reason to. It's thin. It's tender. You would saute that. 
uh, or you would smoke it or grill it. Uh, same thing. You don't saute a five pound eye round roast. It's, it's just the wrong way to cook things. You don't steam beef usually, uh, you know, but steaming is a great way for vegetables. You don't roast vegetables usually because it dries them out so much. So, you know, right, matching the method to what you find there is another one of the skills. Okay. So I'll admit there's a learning curve here. All right. You don't immediately know, uh, have the courage to just walk up to a farmer, you know, go to shake his hand and find out that there's actual dirt on his hand. Don't recoil if the farmer has dirt on his hand. That's a good thing. You want your farmer to have dirty hands. Get the courage. Go speak to them. You know, <clears throat> shopping without a list, that might be really scary for you. I understand, but try it, you know, just try this once and, and you'd be amazed when you get such great results, then your fear is gone. You know, I know it's not immediately apparent to everyone which item is the freshest at the market or immediately apparent how to store it or, or how to cook it. All these things though, they can all be learned. You know, they're, they're not impossible things. And if you want to help, if you want help learning it, I want to be the guy that does that. I would be so excited to help you out with that. And that's, that's why we have things here like the Carefree Cooks Code. This is why we do this every Tuesday at noon so that everybody who wants to enjoy great food and cooking can all get together. We can have the information that helps all of us the most. And it's pretty, pretty much why I've done everything that I've done for the last 10 years or more because I love to share the great pride and freedom that I have in finding the best ingredients and, and cooking it up really well. Everyone should do this. Everyone everywhere should do this. And once you start your own journey toward carefree cooking, once you gather the skills and gain the confidence, then you enjoy all the benefits of local food. And that's when people are going to the farmer's market because they know how to cook. And you know, I love the farmer's market, like I said, for a whole bunch of reasons. And these 11 facts that I'm going to share with you right now are going to prove why the farmer's market is such a better place to go. Number one, it just tastes better. I mean, if you're a fan of good food, if you're a fan of food, if you're a fan especially of good food, this is where you're going to find it. This is where you're going to find the good food. And you know, it's a shame that so many people have dumbed down their taste buds with processed foods, with frozen foods and convenience foods that, that never were fresh. But the full flavored food, the, the enjoyment of, of, of what you find there. It's really one of the greatest parts of being alive to me, of, of enjoying the, the bright colors, right? The brilliant eye appeal. It all heightens your cooking and your eating experience. And if you combine this whole idea with the real flavor of a local strawberry, Oh my goodness, <laughs> ah, just I'm closing my eyes and imagining biting into a strawberry that's right from the farm, fresh, it, it, it's red all the way through. It's even almost a little warm, you know, from sitting in the sun, a peach in peach season, fresh chicken, fresh eggs, even lettuce you're going to have greater enjoyment of all your food. And all right, I'm sure you're going to tell me in the comments, somebody's going to say lettuce has no flavor. I have this argument with people all the time. Yeah, lettuce has flavor. And usually this argument that I'm having with people about the flavor of lettuce, I feel like I'm having it with people that buy iceberg lettuce at the grocery store. And it's no wonder their lettuce doesn't have any flavor. The lettuce, the lettuces, the, the combination of lettuce that I buy at the farmer's market, some of it's peppery, some of it's really smooth, some of it's really earthy, some of it's very soft texture and actually kind of sweet. It's amazing what you can get out of lettuce when you love the farmer's market. Uh, the next thing is living in the moment or, or at least in the season. Look, we talked about this. They're not going to have everything all the time at the farmer's market, but that's okay right? You don't get your birthday and Christmas on every day either. And when it's strawberry season, you know, I enjoy the strawberries so much because they're so special and you know what, then they're gone. But luckily soon it's blueberry season, you know, and then the blueberry season comes around and I love the blueberries and then they're gone. But there's a connection here. There's a connection, the experience that you have with nature when you eat only what's fresh, only what's local, only what's available. Anything else 
is absolutely ridiculous to somebody who knows about food. And the best reaction I have ever seen to this is on my French Food Finds DVD. It is my friend Pascal Mierve. He's the owner of Le Epicure Fine. It's a gourmet spice store on the Rue Claire in Paris. Watch his reaction to this question about in-season eating. You know, you have a season. We have to talk about the season too. Mm-hmm. Explain to you know you can't eat tomatoes in in in, in December. Mm. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you have to respect the season. You are in December during the winter. You eat roots. I mean potatoes, carrots. It's you can eat potatoes with thirty kinds, fifty kinds, different. You know way could be all very good and and you can use and play with different olive oil with you know simple mashed potatoes with uh, all the uh, truffle oil you just had a drop before you serve it's incredible you know it's, it's but simple wh- and but good. why but you know if i can go if i'm in america and i can go to the grocery store and i can get strawberries from chile yeah why do, well, there they are why why not buy them because first it's very far from us chile it's not very good for the planet. It's not very good for our kids. And I'm sure you have a very good tourist so close from your city. I don't know why you're from in the US, but everywhere you have a farm in the US who produce a strawberry, I'm sure. You can find in a market or something. You can wait, eat apple mm. in, in December or in January. But there's a lot that says that it's good for your health also, that the items that come from the soil where you are have um, antibodies or, you know, to fight disease or so on. When you are eating things that are grown in Chile, this doesn't help the local farmer. It, it doesn't taste, just plain old doesn't taste good because they pick them when they're, before they're ripe and they gas them or, or whatever. I agree. <laughs> and French, ha- uh, f- uh, French have a term terroir? Terroir. Terroir. Mm-hmm. Explain to me what that terroir is. Terroir is uh, it's a local production. Terroir means it's from earth, terre. Terroir means local productions from different places of France. You know, produit du terroir means the products from from your earth, from your place. Mm. Terroir is is a simple word mean earth. Mm. So well, it's the the love of the farmer. It, there's more that goes into it than a big factory. Because yeah, and it's, for sure, it's a small producer who makes terroir. We don't have big factory. We have huge company. You have Nestle, you have Kraft, uh, Jacob, Suchar, you have all, all these companies. But they buy vegetables in China, you know. The guy who makes my jam, you know, he waits the harvest, you know. Now he starts to make jam. Hmm? The apricot, for the apricot, it's the same, you know. He waits July or August to make the harvest of apricot and to make the jam. He makes jams for one year, and at the end of the year, it's finished. He doesn't buy jam in a <laughs> uh, apricot or strawberry in China or in Chile or I don't know where or in South Africa to make to, to make a jam. Hmm. It's finished. When it's finished, we eat something else. He treats jam like wine. You you wouldn't yeah. you wouldn't yeah, gather exactly. grapes from e- everywhere. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. So we should treat our food more like wine. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And there's the answer to the, I mean, there's the answer to the one question we've been asking, and it goes to terroir, which is, if you want the best foods, simple methods, simple ingredients, you start with the things that are local. You are not going to be able to make that strawberry taste like a local strawberry. No matter what spice you put on it, no matter how you apply heat to it, it is never going to taste anything like a chili strawberry. For sure, if it comes from, from your district, from your region, it yeah. should, should be better. You kidding? You see, Pascal, he's apoplectic. You you do not eat a strawberry in January. Are you kidding me? This concept 
is only foreign, I think, to the people in the U.S., you know? The fact that you eat in season, and you can see throughout Europe, they eat what is available at the time. The guy doesn't buy apricots from China so he can produce jam all year long. He produces what he finds, and then that's it. That's it for the season. Because the other thing is that these guys are really working hard for you. That's another one of the benefits. The farmers are working hard to supply excellent food, and I want to give them my money. That's, that's where I want my money to go. Most often, these are multi-generational farmers. They have a deep sense of pride in what they're doing. And trust me, they're not getting wealthy <laughs> through farming. <They're coughs> Excuse me, there are no golden silos throughout the heartland in the U.S., but maybe they do lead a richer life, you know, than some of us. And think about this, though. I had heard these statistics before, and they're, they're general. I, I think it came from the USDA. If you spend $100 at the farmer's market, $62 goes back into the local economy. And 99 out of the $100 stays within the state, generally. If you spend $100 at your grocery store, only $25 stays local, 62% contributing to your community versus 25% contributing to your community. So where, where do you want your money to go would be my question. Uh, the fourth benefit is it's good for the earth. I mean, you heard Pascal say it, food in the U.S. travels an average of 1,500 miles to get to your plate. Now, that's a lot of jet fuel. That's a lot of gasoline, right? And shipping this food creates a lot of waste. Food is often treated, waxed, or gassed to make it comfortable comfortable for this long trip. Well, look, your local farmer, he's not gassing or waxing anything. He loves the land. He's supporting his family. Corporate farms? Uh, all right, I won't get into it. Look, it, it's just better for you. The fifth one is just better for you. When food is harvested before it's fully riped and then shipped to you, it has less nutrients. If it's allowed to ripen on the plant and brought to you as quickly as possible, it has more nutrients. If you ship your food 1,500 miles, it's got to be picked way ahead of time so that it doesn't get to you like mush. And most of the mega food, again, highly processed. There could be a lot of pesticides, antibiotics, hormones, gene modification, all this kind of stuff. I like to shake the hand of the guy that grew the fruit, you know? Plus, there's a serendipity to it. This whole serendipity of something new. The grocery store sells what sells. The more it sells, the more of it the grocery store wants to sell. It's popular. Grocery store sells what's popular. Farmers, farmer's market sells what grows, what works, what gives the best yield, what looks the best when it comes out. And I love going to the farmer's market every week, seeing what is new, asking the farmer about it, and then trying to use it in my cooking. And th this is what makes my meals never dull because it always brings a wide variety of fresh ingredients, seasonal ingredients, wholesome foods, sometimes exciting ones that I've never cooked before that I'm trying out, and that can be disaster. I can learn a way not to do it, <laughs> or it can be a tremendous success, and I'm on my way to a whole new variety of foods. Uh, another thing that I consider is if you're an animal lover, I am. I, I can't even listen <laughs> to st any kind of story about mistreatment of an animal. I just, la, 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 la. I just, I don't want to hear it. But I'm also a carnivore. Y I'm not a vegetarian, you know, so this is a bit of contradiction in my head and I'm aware of it. I'm not enough of an animal lover to stop eating some of the animals because I recognize I'm higher up on the food chain. But I kind of compromise with the fact that if chickens, cows, pigs, if they're ra raised humanely, if, if they lead a happy life, you know, if they're in sanitary conditions, if they're treated well, uh, like my friend Twiggy in uh, Maui says, look, man, there's only one bad day. Uh, the eighth benefit is you eat your own dirt. Not, not literally the dirt, but you eat the minerals, the nutrients native to where you live that shape the characteristics of the food. You heard Pascal talk about it. And I do believe there's credibility to the idea that food from your earth carries these minerals, carries antibodies necessarily to keep you healthy. It's my opinion. So knowing where your food comes from, the source of your food is becoming increasingly important with the potential of food safety hazards, of global shipping, a lot of times when you hear these food outbreaks, it has to do with the shipping.
The ninth benefit is that cooking is easier. Cooking becomes so much more fun. You know, when I vacation in Hawaii, I cook dinner all the time because of the inspiring ingredients I find there. And so many people ask me, Chef Todd, you're a chef. You know, wouldn't you want to take a vacation from cooking? Well, you know, I always make the same analogy. If I was a violinist and I could play on a Stradivarius, I would jump at the opportunity. When I'm in Hawaii, I get the freshest ingredients. They're the easiest to cook. They're the most nutritious. They bring me the most enjoyable, uh, enjoyable tactile nature of it. It's like playing on a Stradivarius. Another benefit of the farmer's market is go with your family. Make it a food gathering event. The farmer's market is where people meet, you know, they, they congregate, they, they talk about food. These, these are the people that like to cook. You know, you won't find them in the frozen food section of your grocery store. Meet your neighbors, talk to the farmers, enjoy the outdoors. Rather than shopping under fluorescent lighting, bring your family out into the sun <laughs> and learn about fresh food. The farmer's market makes it shopping an exciting adventure, a treasure hunt you can make for your kids. Johnny, go find the freshest string beans. Sally, go find, you remember what an acorn squash looks like? Go find me one of those that weighs under such and such an amount. How about this? It's going to cost this much per pound. Johnny, you figure out how much, do the math. There's all kinds of education at the farmer's market. You get everybody involved. It, it, it's, it's just so much more thoughtful in gathering your food. And the last one is avoiding plastics and packaging. Uh, I just hate plastics, plastic bags, things like that. It just seems like it's ruining our planet. And if you think about how much packaging goes into the grocery store food, they put lettuce in a plastic bag. You know, fruit is bound in, in mesh. Even broccoli, like the grocery store down the street from me, they have broccoli, they put it on a styrofoam tray and they wrap it in plastic. It's unnecessary. You don't need styrofoam for broccoli. When you go to the farmer's market, you bring your reusable bags. You know, you place the fresh ingredients directly into the bag. You take them home, you save the landfill as well. And this all comes down to having a love of great food, to, to a never ending journey of discovering new foods, becoming a carefree cook for me never ends. You know, I always find new ways to cook new foods, new ways to be proud of what I'm cooking, to be proud of what I've discovered. And you can tell by my smile, by my excitement, the farmer's market makes the whole process just so much more fun, so much more thoughtful, so much more enjoyable. And that's only 11 reasons I gave you. I could probably go on for another 11 more. But look, if, if you love music as much as I do, <laughs> if you love food as much as I do, if you love food and music like I do, imagine that you are some other art form person. Imagine, I'll imagine instead of being a chef, I'm a musician. Okay, I, I, I love playing the guitar like I love cooking. Would I buy the cheapest instrument, go to the dime store and get a plastic guitar? Would I, would I find the strings that were just most convenient that were nearby? Would I find the quickest shortcut to playing a song? I just want to get this song done. No, I would enjoy every bit of it. I would want the best instrument, the coolest strings. I would want to enjoy the process of playing the song. So if I were a musician, I'd love everything about it. I would want to explore. And that's the way I feel about food and cooking. The farmer's market allows you to explore. So get yourself there. Go there and start all the enjoyment that you could find. And you might find yourself as part of the dish of the week. This is when I go through our Carefree Cooks community on Facebook. This is the community of lifetime members of web cooking classes. And I scroll through and er, whenever my cursor stops, I go, wow, that's really impressive. Um, I got to tell you this week, my finger hurts <laughs> from, from stopping the scroll so many times. There is so much fantastic cooking going on in our Carefree Cooks community. And there there are so many comments about the first time I ever made. I'm so proud of. I didn't think I can do it. So everybody this week gets the dish of the week. But what I went looking for, since we're talking about the farmer's market, is people working with fresh in-season food. And first, Brenda. Brenda says that the gorgeous spring weather where she is makes her want
want veggies, 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 and more veggies. So she lightly, she says boiled, I hope she means simmered or poached, uh, beets with water, which I hope she means chicken broth or vegetable broth or something flavorful. Uh, and then she added uh, Celtic sea sauce. That's really cool. Some curly kale, some beet greens at the end. Man, it doesn't get fresher than that, right? Adam, Adam did a beautiful beet and carrot salad with shaved fennel and microgreens, garnished it with walnuts, feta cheese and chives. He said it was almost too pretty to eat. Almost dot, 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 dot. So I guess it got eaten, but all that stuff fresh from the farmer's market. Uh, where Petra is, it's mulberry season. She went out making, uh, picking mulberries and came up with a fantastic mulberry cobbler. And you can't get any closer to the farm than if you live on the farm. And Jason sent us this picture of him making French toast on his flat top uh, with chickens watching. I... I Somehow, I hope it wasn't the chickens that the, the eggs came from. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's just too confusing for me. But he has an audience going directly from the chicken to the flat top, which I really thought was hysterical. Look, if your farmer's market is open this weekend, get down there. See what's happening. See what's going on. Start making it your weekly food habit this year. Oh, the true or false, this week's true or false, Tearing lettuce by hand rather than cutting it with a knife is an old wives' tale. Absolutely false. You do not rip the lettuce along the natural lines of the cells. I don't know who came up with this originally. You are doing the same damage to the cellular structure of lettuce when you rip it with your hand or cut it with a knife regardless. It is going to be exposed to air no matter what you do, and air is what does it. So that is absolutely false. Look, if you know somebody that needs to start a good farmer market habit and eat with fresher food and meet a few farmers and chat with them about it. Like this video, please. Facebook knows that it's a good video then and share it with your friends. They know that you're a good friend. And also, if you'd like to avoid the top three mistakes that everybody makes when selecting fresh ingredients. If you want to know which is the freshest, which is the most flavorful, which is the most nutritious item at the market. If you want to stop wasting food that spoils before you ever got a chance to cook it and know how to store them to protect your investment and also how to use herbs and spices correctly. What a coincidence. That's what we're going to talking about, be talking about in my Buy Fresh, Cook Simple, Eat Well free web class coming up this week. And I go even more deeply into these topics. So make sure you join us. You can go to webcookingclasses.com slash fresh and uh, hold your spot in the next class. And I'll drop a link in the description below so you can grab a spot before someone else does. Hey, it's Chef Todd Moore reminding you uh, that there's a method to your cooking success. And we'll see you next week.